For hungry cowboys out on the range, nothing hits the spot quite like the chuck wagon. Scott Simon of NPR has been sampling the menu. Kent and Shannon Rollins offer kindness. More coffee, brother? Thanks very much. And hot coffee on a cold prairie at 4 a.m. on the Calthan Cattle Company Ranch near the very small town of Seymour, Texas. So what's for breakfast? Eggs and sausage and gravy and biscuits. Top of the morning, morning. gentlemen. Morning. Poor Jim. And company's coming. How are you? I'm doing good, my friend. How are you? Good. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day, Lord, and this beautiful morning. Thank you for all the many things and the blessings in life. Thank you for my little sweet wife. Amen. Let's eat. Y'all know where the plates are. <laughs> The cowboys fuel up to work hard the way few people do anymore. Herding 500 cows, 500 calves, and 30 bulls across 20,000 acres. Kent and Shannon Rollins are cooks who prepare their cowboy meals on wheels on an actual working chuck wagon. Chuck is a slang word that cowboys or cook used to use for food. Hey, time for Chuck. Maybe. It's a Studebaker, manufactured in 1876, way before the company made cars. Home away from home. Kent Rollins figures their wagon travels 40,000 miles a year. Everybody got a junk drawer at home. That's a junk drawer, serving utensils. And tries to keep it orderly. What's that chopper? Hash knife, mm -hmm. spatula, Passer, chopper, windshield scraper. <laughs> and this is Bertha, Kent's 30-year-old wood stove. A 385-pound cast iron hunk of burning love and heat. She puts out a lot of good warmth in the winter and she'll burn you up all summer. Okay. The food can't be fussy. Space is tight. Fresh is impractical. You don't roll past organic farmer's markets on a cattle drive. How do you feel about anybody who calls you a chef? Well, chef are people that have had proper training at school. You know, it's it sort of goes against my grain. Can't get full on fancy. We, we create food you can eat. Kent was raised near the banks of the Red River, where his father ran a cattle business in Hollis, Oklahoma. We didn't have a lot to get by on, mm -hmm. but we never went hungry. Everybody got to eat. That was the best part of it. There's more to a table than just the legs that hold it up. It's a family that binds it together. Cowboy cooking may not look like haute cuisine, but there are time-honored rules. As far as I, I know. Mike, Cowboys tip their hats and watch their language. Uh, you can make it. Uh, there's no foul language at a camp when there's a woman present. And Shannon Rollins is nearly always present. She runs the business and the Dutch ovens. He's taught me to be patient and just persevere because, you know, they're counting on you. They met seven years ago at Kent's cooking school and have been married almost four. He taught her how to cook. Shannon taught him to eat food that isn't cooked. How did you ever get Kent Rollins to eat sushi? It was a long process. Yeah. There's been a lot of things that Kent Rollins did not eat before I expanded his palate. One of them was avocado. Oh, he yeah. told me he had stepped in too many things in a pasture that looked like avocados. <laughs> Cowboy cooking has to make the most of what's at hand. They once ran short of supplies in a Texas blizzard and had mounds of potatoes, but no oil. Dug around there and found me a bottle of Sprite sitting over there under the table that one of them cowboys had. I thought, I bet you can't fry with it, but I bet you can bake with it. I knew it was a keeper. Sparkling taters is one of the recipes in Kent's new book, A Taste of Cowboy, along with all-night sourdough pancakes, green pepper Frito pie, and throwdown winning chicken fried steak. Are there vegetarian cowboys? <laughs> <laughs> Vegetarian cowboys. Did you know I was a vegetarian, Scott? I didn't, are you? Cows eat grass and I eat cows. <laughs> you know, so I guess that makes me a vegetarian. But uh, I've never seen one show up at the wagon. I don't think he'd live long. The Rollins have rolled their chuck wagon into a catering firm that feeds an estimated 20,000 people a year. We can't tell you how much we appreciate you. At this year's Saddle Up Cowboy Festival in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, 
Canton 3 Kitchen Cowboys spread his special Red River Ranch rub into 100 cuts of Angus to feed cowboy performers. Welcome to cooking school. This is uh, going on the 11th year. And twice a year, Kent teaches cowboy cooking to city folks and others. Y'all are in the honeymoon suite over it ain't much protected. No, man. <laughs> His students in Hollis, Oklahoma stay in what he calls cowboy condominiums. And you're gonna get a fork. It is a sacred fork. Do not Kent makes certain all students get the points. This is not just a school about learning to cook, this is a school about learning about life, too. But these days, Kent and Shannon Rollins cook on ranches just a few weeks a year. Cattle drives are disappearing. A lot of people think there aren't cowboys anymore. You can't see them driving down the interstate 75 miles an hour. You know, I tell people we've been in a lot of places that ain't on a map, sure ain't on a GPS. And uh, as long as there's cows out there somewhere, and thank the good Lord that they're still wide open country, there's gonna be a cowboy you gotta take care of them. And then you gotta have an old cook to feed them.